one slice, we come on the show, we talk about the sermon in real life perspective and let you know what we think about whatever it is that Pastor Balaji has been teaching. Hello world and welcome to today's episode of Slice, where we get to dissect God's word from our set man every Sunday. My name is Nene Rufus, aka Come On Now, and with me are two wonderful, amazing, spectacular ladies. Um, I have with me Mrs. Kome Woko and Mrs. Chinelo Bali, the amazing women, and you get to find out through the course of this show. Hello, ladies. Nice to have you on today's episode you're looking ravishing thank you thank you so much so mrs chinelo how was sunday service for you it was really good i mean the faith series has been really inspiring it's been re it's you know every time pastor b comes up with these things it's like a wake up very true you know, like a wake up very so true. it's just it's just felt like that so what what stood out for you from sunday service there are a few things that stood out for me okay um, when he spoke about fear mm. you know I'm a procrastinator and when he said one of the biggest reasons why people procrastinate is fear yes it made me interrogate myself mm. like, okay what what is it that I'm actually afraid of it could it be fear for me mm. yes or no you know and um I figured that some of it is actually fear okay. wanting things to be perfect wanting to make sure that everything is right if anything I put out making sure it's right so it, that in itself holds me back because then I wait and wait and wait and wait. Mm. You know, so that that in itself was something for me, you know, that realizing that actually perhaps I'm procrastinating as much as I do because there's wow. some level of fear. Mm. That is so, so spot on because I think I can relate a whole lot to that. You know, I was having a, a conversation with one of my leaders and then she's like, what is your biggest fear? And I'm like, fear of mediocrity I don't want to do anything and then it's mediocre and then it's just like could that be fear of failure and I'm thinking about it I'm like wait that's true you know you just want to wait for something to be perfect you just want to wait for something to be good and then you're like oh I'll do it later for the right time I'll do it later and then but it's just fear so thank you for this series we can identify that enemy and address it Mrs. Woko what stood up for you in Sunday service for me, um, first of all, I must comment Pastor Balaji for always the examples to, he uses to drive in the message. Come on now, you very know, true. And, um, there was absolute clarity in mm. understanding your situation, like the example he made on beans, rice, yes. you know, um, yam with um, spaghetti and yes. noodles. You know, that was really spot on because very. sometimes to overcome um, your situation or wow. to have faith more for the next level mm. you must understand you know the kind of situation that you're dealing with and Very true. Um, the level of faith that you need to overcome um, that face yeah yes. so it made so much meaning to me that that was that was a very spectacular um, illustration. Yeah. What are you praying for? Knowing your season, yes, yes. knowing your situation, what you're believing the Lord for. Do not envy the next person. Yes. You know, you're envying someone that is praying just a small one small, minute prayer. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then you know what you're believing God for is for the nations. Yes. You don't envy someone that is just praying for daily bread. Yeah. So that was really, 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 really spot on. Okay, so we're going to be going in depth a little bit. We're going to be knowing practically how your faith has worked for you. Has there been any time, Mrs. Chinulo, where you have exercised your faith intently to get a result? Can you tell us of such a time? Okay. The, I mean, there's been several times where we've had to exercise. Mm -hmm. I think daily living. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're faith-filled Christians. You know, constantly exercising your faith. Yes. But one thing that really stands out to me if you ask me that question is, the wait to have my daughter, mm. you know, so um, my husband and I waited nine years mm -hmm. before wow. um, we had our child. Nine years? Yeah, nine years, nine years. Wow. And um, I remember before it happened, mm. you know, for most of those nine years, it was it didn't feel like waiting because in honesty, the first two years we weren't trying to have a child, oh. you know, but then when we decided, okay, we want to have a child and it wasn't happening, 
Mm. You know, then you go through all the, okay, what's wrong? What's not wrong? You know, go see the doctors. And they came back with, everything is fine. And we were like, oh, done. You know, we <laughs> we're good. Something, yes. like, you, could, you know, you know what you're up against and you yes. can deal with it. So anyway, the time went on and went on and went on. And there'll be moments where, you know, you'd feel like, oh, is you know, this thing just happened, just happened already. Just, you know, let's just, and we had several rounds of IVF, you know, Whoa. that kept failing. You know, we had six IVFs that were unsuccessful. Six yeah. IVFs. Wow. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. You know, we were like, oh. and I remember the first one that we did, you know, in my head, I just knew it was going to be fine because I mean, it's IVF and there was nothing wrong with us. So wow. I just knew it was going to be fine. And, you know, we got pregnant and then had a miscarriage. And it was just like the worst thing to happen. Well, you know, but anyway, we got on, did all the others that did nothing came of them. And I remember when I got to 30, Mm. I prayed and I said, God, I wanted to be married by the time I was 21. You made you, you did it for me. Mm. I wanted to finish having my children by the time I was 30. Where are the kids? As in, there are (laughs) one one hasn't even happened. Do we now, Lord? You know, so I'm like, God, it's time. You know, wow. it's time. And I remember because so many things used to come up when we prayed about, when we would pray for having a child and so many different prophecies mm. and so many fingers pointing in one direction. And I remember saying, but God, you're God. Mm. You know, even if anybody thinks they're sitting in some coven somewhere doing whatever they're doing, you're God. You're yeah. God. You know, oh, so yes. there's no way. If, there's any, if, if you want this thing to happen, mm. you will make it happen. If, if you and I we knew we were going to have our own kids Come we just knew we would have our own kids it was just a matter of when hmm. right but I remember getting to 30 and I said God it is time wow you know I want I want to have my children it's hmm. time and Demi was born two weeks after my 31st birthday oh, yeah. that's such a gift from yeah. God yeah. so you you literally went back to God to say Lord do it yes this is your promise this is what this is your covenant for my destiny yeah. do it but I have one very strong question. In those nine years, how did your mind work? Did you ever doubt the power of God for a minute? Did you ever get angry at God? Did you ever just, you know, have a, a, a moment where you just bust out like, Lord, if you don't do this, I won't serve you again? No, never. Wow. I never had a moment where I said I wouldn't serve you again. Wow. No, I don't think there's anything in this <laughs> life. Wow. There's nothing that will ever make me say I, I can't even think of what that thing could be that, that is ever make super say, amazing i won't serve god there's nothing because no matter <laughs> wow. what god will continue being god right? exactly so, he said if you don't praise me i'll raise stones you know I mean? so there's nothing wow. there's absolutely nothing but I, I can't say there weren't times that i didn't cry. of course there were times i cried mm. there were times where i was disappointed because mm. building every time you have an ivf cycle you build yourself up towards mm. the end result expectation exactly so when it didn't happen like that you know it's disappointing, you know, and you question God and say, God, what's happening? Mm. You know, but I always, we, my husband and I both, we always knew we would have our own children. Wow. We, we just always knew it. You know, it was just a matter of when. Mm, that is so yeah. amazing. amazing. We always knew we'll have a child. It was just a matter of when. I think I think that's so deep I'm because that, don't, I don't want to be like Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> don't test me farther than this, please, like Lord. <laughs> oh wow, okay. that's a super amazing. The Bible says, "Having done all things to stand, stand." So I think that's what I, I got from what you were saying, you and your husband. You know, you always knew yeah. the child will come. It was just a matter of when. That's faith right there. That's right. That's faith that's right. right there, Mrs. Walker. <sighs> <laughs> it's the sigh for me <laughs> yes super inspiring nine years that's amazing yes okay for me my fit um well first of all like she said we live a life of faith yes, everything please. you want to do you we understand that by human capacity we don't have the ability to do that which god has committed into our hands to yes, do yes ma'am and so every step of the journey you live life by faith you yes know? but um one of the things that stood out for me one of my most um inspiring faith work for myself was when it was time to get my own house oh wow you know and um we always thought that yeah okay you know how with with the amount that you have mm-hmm. with the with your budget mm-hmm. you know trying to live realistically and also listening to what god has to say yes. and they were not looking like the same thing 
because mm. while I prayed about having my own house um, and the feedback that God gave me was nothing compared to the reality that we had on ground. Wow. And, but thank God, you know, as a woman of faith, Come I decided to go with my father, mm. you know, and I remember when I saw the property and I saw the place. Mm. And, you know, I definitely found peace with that place and confirmation that this mm. was where God wanted me. Confirmation. To but when I got the price, it was... Somebody say the price. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was really, at that point, I knew that to be, to have what God has destined you mm. to have is beyond your human understanding. Very true. And it is beyond your human capacity. Now, that's why they say anything that God commits into your hand, if you, if, if you see yourself being able to solve it, then that's not that's not God in there. Mm, because mm. your your vision, God's vision for you will always supersede, supersede your human understanding. Yes. You know, and I remember that immediately I saw it, I had the price. I first told myself that that's fine. Mm. Because you must build up yourself. Yes. And you will not allow, you know, the human mind try to limit what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Because mm. like we said, we human beings can be hindrances to what God wants to do. Very true. So I remember Very calling powerful. my husband and I was like, oh babe, I've seen a house. And I was like, okay. And he was How like, much? where? I told him. And I was like, no, don't worry. I don't want to say much so that you're not discouraged. <laughs> when you come, you know, so when he saw the developer, he saw the place, he was like, babe, how are we going to get here? Wow. This is not what we spoke about. I said, but this is what God spoke about. Mm. And I'll go with what God said. Mm. And you know, for me, I didn't have to struggle to pay. Mm. I didn't Eve. have to struggle, you know, to, to decorate the place to Come the standard now. that everything that God said, wow. you know, and the timing, the, the you know, the, the form of payment, mm. everything worked out according to what God said. All good. I just needed to do was trust him every step of the way. In short, I think by the second to the last time, it felt like, okay, it wasn't happening as smooth as it had, as it had come mm. from the beginning. And at that time, I sat down and I said, You're, like, whatever you start, you will finish. Come on now. And finish I as know that you, you, you do not live halfway. Oh, and your grace is you, sufficient yes. for me. Yes. And, you know, by the time I, I kept reassuring myself, confessing positively, even in the face of adversity, mm. you know, I could see that. The doors were open. Mm. Everything was working together for my good, mm. you know, and to the glory of God. The Bible says that we are victors. So no matter what we do, we are more than conquerors. As you spoke, a lot of scriptures were just welling up in my, in my heart as you were speaking. Because every step of the way, as you shared, there's always a scripture that, you know, the Lord uses to birth a reality in that season. That's yes. True. Because I'm sorry. Please sorry go to ahead. Cut you Whenever he gives you a promise, he gives you a word to back up yes. that promise. So Very that true. every step of the way, you, you know, have you have to something to hold on to. Yeah. And I yes. remember that when he told me, um, about this property um, and I saw the property I remember that when I stepped foot on the property hmm. the word in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 which it says every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon it says that have I given unto you yes immediately I heard that scripture I knew that confirmation I do not know I do not want to know what is going to happen I remember my husband saying babe you know you're, you're, you're the one that hears God you're the one that I'm, <laughs> I'm with you and Come every on time I go back to my sacred place, I tell God, wherever the phone of, foot of my soul of my feet shall tread upon, you have given me that land. That land will not be taken from me. Hmm. We will get the finances to fund that land. Come on now. And we will build that house that you have destined that I and my family will hmm. live in. You know, and every time I will go to that land, I'm, I'm trying to show you the extent of faith because hmm. sometimes people need to know that in exercising faith, there is an action to do. Yes. Not just saying, oh, I'm trusting. Yes. So for every time, there was something that the developer told me that when it got to a time, the the owner of the land came and said, you know what, let's not sell again. Wow. But he told the, the, the man that this particular lady that owns this house, <laughs> I can't tell her that she, I'm, I'm She has possessed it. He said because she comes here every day wow. and she speaks on the land. She walks around that Come land on now. and she takes possession. Oh my God. So, oh my God. you know, he came back to me and when I eventually I met the owner, he was like, they told me so much about you. 
They wow. told me how you dedicate, how you bring people, wow. how you speak over the land, how you come every morning, you speak over the land. Come I said because now. I was taking possession come on of now. what God had given me. That's it, possession. So, um, I love that. It's, it's very important that when God gives you a word, yes. you must stand with that word until you see a manifestation yes. of the promise of God. It's not yes. enough for you to just say, God has said it and you go to sleep. Yes. You must learn to exercise your authority. Yes. Standing, standing, you know, and enforcing the will of God and the promises of God. This is so over good. Your this is so good. This is this is too good. This is good preaching. <laughs> this is the second dose of, of, of preaching from Sunday. This is so powerful. This is Thank so God. powerful. You know, we know that we pray prophecies to pass. And what you're saying about going to possess the land, that is just so true. That is just so true. You know, you went to the land, you spoke over it because we know our, our voice and our power. words, they are less with power. And the Lord says that, you know, he will bring, he exalts his word above his name. So when you give the Lord back the words that he has given to you, you know, it just perfects everything. And even when the devil is trying to, you know, roar like a, a roaring lion, the Bible says like a, he is not. You know, we use the word of God to enforce that victory. This is just so powerful. This is so powerful. I'm just trying to take a moment to just seep in. Oh, I'm telling you, it, it's so Thank amazing. God. From the the story of your childbirth to the story to, um, to how she, you know, conquered and acquired her property. It's just so amazing. We can see faith in action because faith is really in the action. We don't, we don't, we're not as uh, the Christians that just believe that God would do it. We know that he has done it, matter of fact, you know. We are more than conquerors. We always see from a standpoint of victory. Pastor said something on Sunday. He said that when the Lord gives you a word, he has gone ahead of you to see the future. That's the end product. You know, he doesn't tell you, oh, when you get there, the landlord will say, uh, you're not going to, he, he doesn't want to build anymore. When you get there, they are, uh, the doctors are not going to tell you that, oh, they can't see anything. He just told you that you have a baby. He just told you that you possess the land. So it's now up to you to exercise that faith. That is the work. That is the work that we put into faith. That is super, super amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, there's a place of imagination when it comes to faith. Was there any time, any of your experience, you know, having to put your mind to work no, when you were working by faith? As, um, Pastor Komi was just talking, it's just like, it brought me back to one of the messages that Pastor B preached yeah. when he spoke about Abraham and how God took him to go and look at the stars and told him to count it. And then, took, so he gave him a picture, picture. of a visual. Yes. Yeah. Then he took him to go and count the sands, he gave him words. Okay, so do you understand? So I'm like, there's a pattern in this thing. And you're speaking about, you've gone, she, she actually said, I had seen my family, yes. the house that my family going to yes. live in. Okay. So I went and spoke the word yes. over that. You know, same way, I knew, I, I, I know I'm a mother of children. That's I've right. seen my family, That's do you right. understand? So when it was going on, I, God, I know. We, we both, we said, God, we know God is going to give us children. Yes. In fact, when people would speak, my husband told me after we had given birth, that one, one of his aunties had called him and was speaking to him, that to me, aren't you worried? Are you not going to have your own kids? You know? And he said to the lady that, you know what? I know that my wife will give birth. Come to on me. now. We're going to have our own children. Yes. Right. right? And, she, and he said, but even if we don't, he goes, that's not going to change anything. We will adopt, but we will have our own children. So it was it was like a reality yes. to us yes. that hadn't happened. Mm. Same way that like that house was already a reality to yes. you. Yes. You know, and there's a place for trust in that. And I love that you, you brought that out yes. about that trusting yes. in God. Because you know, like you said, sometimes God will give you the end results. Yes. And he doesn't tell you the journey getting there. He, he doesn't right. always give you, yes. you know, maybe we get we get drip fed things mm -hmm. here and there, you know. Perceptible. This is it. But at the same time, God has given us the this is where I'm taking you to. Yes. So it's just trusting. Mm. So even when things don't look like what God is saying, you know, sometimes, it, in fact, a lot of the times, the reality is so far from God's truth. Mm -hmm. Very like true. Like the facts. Mm -hmm. Very true. So far from God's truth. Very true. But that ability to trust in that word, trust in what God, and you know, when Pastor B says, see yourself in your testimony. Exactly. The first time he said that in church, that I was in church, that I heard him say it, I realized that, I have all these things that I want, mm. that I, things I want to be, things I want to, um, I would like for myself, right? But I'd never seen myself in, seriously, I'd never seen myself in some of these things. Mm. So that day when he said, see yourself in your testimony, 
I realized, oh my God, I've, ne I've not actually seen this thing. So I had to go and work on a visual image. Come on now. I had to go and actually work on an image, right? That's right. This is what I want to see. So now when I'm praying certain things, I see myself in oh, those positions. Oh, that's how I'm you do it. I'm looking at myself yes. in those things. Yes. I'm seeing myself in those positions. In fact, there was something that my husband was working on recently. And I said to my husband, I said to me, I have seen us at the opening of this Come on thing. now. Yes. It's going to happen. Yes. You know, because I've, I've seen us cutting the ribbon I've seen, I've seen it it's going to happen because I've already put myself in that picture you know so I'm like I'm, I'm so happy that you brought yeah. that up because it, there is a process to this yes thing. you see it you speak it yes you, you see it. it you speak it you believe it yeah. and it will come to pass the Bible says trust and obey because there's no other way so I like that these stories are really pointing to that trust and obey if God doesn't do it what do we do <laughs> we, we stand yes, we stand right? haven't I mean, done all things so if they after God is God you know if God doesn't do it God will do it there's no way he will do it and it says my word will not fall to the ground so far we have that word we know that we have the end of our faith this is super amazing you know pastor B pastor Balaji do he teaches us like you said see the end of your testimony pray specific prayers don't just tell the lord you know ah lord i believe that you prosper me if you're making 1000 and you now make 1500 he did prosper you <laughs> you were not specific and when we see how god worked with those um in the scriptures you can tell that he wants us to be specific he told noah the whole dimension of the ark to make you know he told um, um peter to go to the belly of the he told him the fish you know i even believe that being so specific about what you want is actually in you that's you actually exercising your faith yes too. because a lot of the times yeah sometimes we have these desires and it's just too big yeah. too you know big, yeah. you know it's too big and you can't ah, you're, as you're saying it you're even you're thinking to yourself ah god can you you know yes but you know when you be, like be specific about Break it, so it when down. that thing comes to pass, yes. you're like God, wow, you really, you oh, know, you God. really did this. Oh, that's that's you know? so true. Yeah, so I, I really believe in that being specific. It's in fact, I've I've changed my prayer to accommodate mm. being specific. Like wow. when I'm saying, if I'm praying for something, and I say, God, I want this exactly like this is a, you know, and sorry, just to go back to my daughter, yes. we had enough years to pray mm. what we wanted. Wow, you know, so. And I say, God, thank you. You literally ticked all the boxes. I prayed even down to how she looks. Oh my God. I'm not joking with you. Oh my even God. Even down to how I wanted her to look. Mm. You know, the kind of things that I would want. You know, I said, God, I really want a daughter who's going to bring me and my husband together. You know, and I see like when certain things happen, I'm just like, God, you really actually tick the boxes. Right. So I know for a fact that that being specific is also exercising your faith and believing like God will do it. That's right. Yeah. This is super amazing. God will do it. God will do it. Being specific is such a powerful tool. I remember when I was praying for my relationship and I would be specific with um, how he will behave, how he will act, how he will treat me, what he will say. And when I see certain things just play out, I'm just like, God, is this how specific you are? Down to sense of humor and those things, how, you know, he will hear from the Lord, he will trust in the Lord. And all those things just make me go like, wow, the next thing you're believing God for, you better be specific. I think the Lord uses um, that specificity specificity sorry to just walk on our minds to just help you see that okay this is what you want and this is how you are going to get there you know if you're not specific how how do you even know what you want so that's just super amazing we're so blessed by this faith series it's really working in um in in us <sighs> Somebody say wine press. <laughs> wine press. Somebody say wine press. <laughs> wine press. So wine press is uh, around the corner. We're super, super excited. January 2023 is about to be explosive because yeah. wine press is about the corner. <laughs> I'm super excited. So we have ladies here on the couch. And I just want to know, is that, uh, Mrs. Kome is our um, women leader for the Lekki campus. So it's no coincidence that we have you here. I just want to know, what is in for the women for Wine Press 2023? Oh, um, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are taking notes. I'm going to hold on to this. For the women, I can say that um, a lot of announcements, hmm. you're going to see more women voices. Come on now. More, more women empowerment. Hmm more influential women, mm. you know, um, 
and like I've been saying like never before, God is really interested in the women in this season. And um, you know, more grace to become more. Mm. I believe that wine press for me personally, wine press for me personally is always a confirmation of the year. Yes. You know, yes. because by the time we start with the fasting, it's a time where God speaks to you about what the year will be. Mm. Then when we come to wrap it up in wine press, it's a confirmation of all that God spoke to you during the 21 days fasting and prayer then a cap of an empowerment to run mm. you know that's that's wine press for me and i believe that um, nobody should start their year without going through that 21 days fasting Come and on attending now. wine press because yes. as much as it's important to fast it's important to like you know there's a part in the bible that says tarry in this place mm. until an endowment will come upon you Hallelujah. meaning that just because you prepared you need the end product of wine press Hallelujah. to run because yes. grace will be released, power will be released, mm. you know, clarity will come, yes. direction will come, yes. insight, yes. you know, total understanding of the full picture. Mm. Because sometimes for me, um, God would have spoken to me about something. But whenever I come for wine press, when the man of God begins to speak, yes more light yes. shed on yes. what God spoke to me about. I totally and agree. then I have, you know, revelation knowledge is such a blessing. Yes. Revelation yes. comes yes. to expand your thoughts. Mm. Comes to, you know, comes to make you feel like your sudden is so powerful. Yes. You know, and for me, Charles was hard. So yes. It gives you that I can do spirit. So if I hear you very well, Mrs. Kome, you're saying that there'll be lots of announcement, endowment, an invitation that is super amazing so mrs chinelo what do you have to say to those that are just you know trying to underplay this wine press oh i'll just join online i'll just do this i'll just do the fasting what do you have to say to those people glad you're asking me that because that was me two years ago wow right so i joined online but i wasn't even really taking it seriously i didn't participate in the fast i was just you know i just our church is doing something so i just joined online wow passively but, passively very wow. passively. but last year mm. i was very sorry this year i was really intentional about wine press i participated in the fast and i made sure i in fact i was one of the people that was coming to church before <laughs> come on now before so i can get a good space to sit down. right but i can tell you i have some serious testimonies from wine press right there's a project that i've been working on for about two years now and I just kept on, I couldn't get past a certain line with that project because I just felt I couldn't put this out. It wasn't quality enough, wow. right? And it was something I was funding by myself. I, and I was willing, it, it, it was going to take a lot of money and I was willing to do all that. After the wine press, it wasn't even long. Wow. A company reached out to me, right? And they told me what they want, what they, who they were, what they wanted to do and all of this. And I thought this was a joke. It was so specific. I thought wow. it was fraud. Mm. Wow. So I thought, did someone hack my phone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, did, did, you know I, I actually thought, so I had to go on, um, I did a LinkedIn search for the person who sent me the email and realized that it was, oh, this is authentic. So I sent them back an email. And before you know it, they paid me to do what I was going to pay to do. Wow. You know, flew me out to the UK, put me up, everything. Wow. You know, and did the whole project and I'm, getting royalties for it wow. wow so it's like how <laughs> you know wow Apart, so many things I, I was just sharing a testimony yeah. with you not long ago something that happened in my home again from that just being sensitive around that time because that fasting made me really sensitive spiritually yes. so you know there was a lot of instruction that i got from the lord that period god showed me a lot of things opened my eyes to a lot of things you know saved us from what could have been a major thing wow you know so don't, please don't take this wine press. Don't take it for granted. Do you know? not take it, don't for, take granted, it for granted, please. At all. I'm telling you, I will, I'm going to be one of the people that are sat right there. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> like, I'm going to be here on time. Wow. Is that, because I, it's something I will never take for granted again. You know, it was... Wow. And you know when you spoke about being in a certain place because there's a grace, yes. you know, for certain things yes. at that place. I remember the last Fresh Dew. I, I just had to be here. I, I was supposed to be somewhere that weekend, but something in me, I had to be here. Fresh to use our, our women's program. Yes, you know, and I'm just church. trying to butcher you on your point. I just had to be here. And I remembered when the prayer was going on, Pastor Mo came up on stage to pray for um, the leaders. Yeah. And while she was praying, 
my spirit told me to go and give her a hug later that she's carrying a grace for me i went to her after the service i greeted her as usual and then she, we pulled away and i said pastor mo i need to hug you my spirit told me to come and hug you mm. so immediately i hugged her she just started to speak specifically oh, to what i'm going through at the to, to what situations surrounding my life at the moment wow. very specifically and giving me very clear what just what i needed wow. i literally left here that day feeling like i'd won the lottery mm. i'm not even joking mm. so sometimes you know you prepare for these things that like yeah. we prepared for the fresh stew yeah. but don't just prepare yourself with the fasting and then miss out and miss yeah. out you know yeah. prepare yourself and come enjoy yeah. what you've prepared for come and enjoy come and get that what harvest. you've prepared for you know it's I, amazing i can't wait to, to um yeah. to wine. wine press i cannot wait to wine press yeah wow. i saw the advert on and then I was I saying to my husband, we are going to be we here. We are going. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are going to be here from Monday to Sunday, so we're going to be fully loaded. So like she said, do not miss wine press for anything. Do not let the enemy just put activities around your life that, you know, want to make you just distract you from enjoying the flow of God. It's the beginning of the year. There is a harvest that the Lord wants to, you know, that he has prepared for you, that he wants you to, you know, enjoy. And she mentioned something about instructions instructions our our testimony is literally at the end of our obedience what's that little thing the lord is telling you to do that it just sounds so flimsy do it and you will see it you will see his hand be specific about what you want to get from the lord for you know the coming year write it down come expectant you know when it's time for every program we always tell people come expectant be expectant what's that emptiness that you want the lord to pour into you you want him to fill you up what's that word you want to receive what's that word you re you receive from him that you want him to confirm because you can hear from our beautiful ladies here you know they didn't just come empty you know, he said in his word, come boldly to the throne of grace that you obtain mercy. When you come boldly, you say, oh Lord, this is what I want from you. Help me, help me. The Lord will fill you up. And I do not want you to miss Wine Press 2023. Wine Press 2023 has your breakthrough attached to it, your blessings attached to it, you know, your next level attached to it. I don't know why um, you feel like you shouldn't be here, but I want to encourage you as well as my other um, leaders here that, you know, be there, be there, be at the forefront, be here and let the Lord meet you at the point of your need. Thank you so much, ladies. For, it has been a wonderful um, episode. I have learned a lot from these conversations. I would never be, you know, flimsy with my prayers i will never you know doubt god i will never you know just second guess god's word i will stand you know hearing your story even if i was trying to think of you know <laughs> doubting the lord i would never do that because hearing your stories have really inspired me to stay in faith stand in faith possess your testimony you know believe the lord without an out of doubt you know those are really specific things i took from the couch today and I just want to thank you all for watching until we we'll come your way same time next week see you we want to say a big thank you to our pastor thank you for filling us up for blessing us we love you first of all and keep being the man that the Lord has sent you to be goodbye world <laughs>